Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. I think it's... Uh time that we need to bring in our, our super awesome guests. I mean, what do you know about our super awesome guests other than we talked to him briefly uh, earlier? I, I can tell you that Nikki and Lupe are going to absolutely wow you with uh, all the event details. And all the kisses. Uh, the kisses. There might be some secrets. We heard some secrets backstage that I won't reveal. I don't know if they're going to reveal those secrets on air, but I can tell you right now, it's going to be a fun time. All right, so we're going to be bringing in uh, Nikki and Lupe, and we're going to be talking to them about the third annual car and bike show with the beard and stash competition. So let's welcome them in. Hey, ladies. Hi. Hey. Hi. Wow, your enthusiasm level just like we were like all like going crazy and everything, and then all of a sudden the show started, and then now you guys have like kind of cooled it off. I'm like. Just yeah. Just relax. Then, we're all, we're all here to have a good time and have some fun and learn about a really awesome event. So how are you ladies doing tonight? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> oh. Dave, all right, here we go. Uh David Ludwig says hi. John Fabulier says, Hey fellas. Hi. Hey fellas. Hey, Do <laughs> you think is John Abraham older than you? Oh, I don't know. No, I we're close, but I'm a few years yeah. older than he is. So uh, I'm like the old guy in all the circles. So, oh, hey, Melissa's Nikki and Lupe, how are y'all? Fantastic! It's like we just saw you. We, it we is, did. It is just like we just saw him. Uh, oh, see, oh, oh John, God. I take that bad. He'll be fifty in June, but Uh-oh. yeah, so he 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 does have me by a, a few, like almost two decades, I think. That's a lot of years. So let's talk a little bit about this great event, the uh, car and bike show beard and stash competition. So there's a whole like vehicle thing going on here. And uh, let's, let's talk about the whole genesis of this event. Now, as I learned, as we were kind of talking earlier and as we we're getting ready for the show that you, this is your baby, this is Nikki, this is where you started this whole thing and, and, uh, let's, let's go back to why, why, why did you start this whole thing? So nobody really talks about those kids that grow up with parents who have PTSD and what kind of traumas and stuff that causes them and what really it kind of causes for those people that are suffering from PTSD. And I grew up that way. I grew up with a dad that was super angry who came back from Vietnam and was just confused, didn't know, you know, did his best. And I saw him get his life together the past six years that he was alive and that we got with him. And I've been through my own types of traumas. And there's so many people that I've been around, including Lupe, that that we have literally made it through our worst times. So when I finally had the opportunity to jump up and open my own business, I wanted it to be more than me opening a business. Because when you open a small business, it means so much to communities because communities are truly built on the small businesses that make it. And I didn't want to take so much in, but rather give more out. So I said, well, honey, we're in it let's do something big with it. Let's do a car and bike show and a beard and stash competition. Two of the things that we love the most. We're barbers. We love to do this stuff. And it, I got the keys to this place in September of 2020. And then all of a sudden this great birth 
became of what it was going to be. And I have always kind of been a shit show, but a good shit show. Okay. <laughs> it's the good manure that you grow things out of. You, you grow the flowers and the vegetables and the things that fill your soul. And it's good to be in the shit with so many amazing people that do so many amazing things. So then we just, we reached out to central Texas beard and mustache club. Um, and I asked them for help and I've learned so much over the course of just these three years from simple differences. Like it's, you think of talk show hosts, you're, like, you're going to host this event. Well, really in the beard and the bearding community, that's an MC. So even just like little verbiage from the very beginning to now, there's so much that goes into these events. And I have been privileged to meet so many of you awesome people. And I'm super grateful that we get now we have 20 categories for our cars and, mo and motorcycles. Then we have 14 categories for our, um, for all of our hair beard and, and beard and stash competition, but it's not limited to that. And I wanted to be able to give out to two organizations that truly meant what my life was wrapped around. And that was women dealing with trauma, men dealing with trauma, families dealing with trauma, and being able to lean on friends and support systems to, to help get grow through all the things and all, all the life shit, the good and the bad. And it's just so awesome to be able to put this event together to help so many people. So I understand the correlation between like being, uh, working with hair and all that stuff. Where does the whole car and motorcycle aspect come in? Was this like something that you were just guys were interested in and it was like, Hey, you know, that, that's a good idea. Let's just kind of put the two together. Yes. So when I was a kid, one of the things that me and my dad did all of the time was we would go to dirt track races and watch the sprint cars Ooh. out in Midland, Texas. And then there was one here in uh, Colleen before they tore it down and built the Walmart. And there was a they place called Lake Lake they in tore Lubbock. Colleen down? Oh my gosh, the whole town? No, they tore, oh. they tore the racetrack down and built oh. the Walmart. I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Colleen is doing that all by itself. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Nobody can <laughs> tell her <from> Walmart. <laughs> but, but it, yeah, I've always been fascinated with cars. I have always just the beauty behind it. Um, we, I just love it. And I knew that that was also a way to bring people together. Like, how cool. Like, my two favorite things. Awesome freaking cars and really cool beards. And it's just so fun. So fun. So I wanted to get to know what it mean. Yeah, it is. So as you were kind of talking about PTSD and everything, let's let's talk a little bit about your charities that you picked for this event. So uh, first one here, we have Project Healing Heroes. Tell us how you got involved with them and a little bit about them. So it's a really funny story. My My friend that I call brother and his wife that I call sister – Actually, he would do propane. He had just got out of the military and he serviced this house that happened to be owned by Dr. David Tharp, which is the founder of this organization. And he did some stuff with Chris Kyle, um, not with Chris Kyle, but on Chris Kyle, I think. I'm not 100% sure about that story. I think that maybe that's something I need to be more specific who's Chris about. But who's, who's anyway, Chris they Kyle? met him. They the met sniper? him. It was like, Oh. Hey, yeah, this guy has this organization that helps with PTSD. Maybe you should check it out. I know that you said you wanted to give back to somebody. And I started looking through it. And the way that they help combat veterans and first responders from all different backgrounds and help give them a principle to kind of base a resiliency to life and what throws out you on top of what you're already trying to deal with, with your post-traumatic stress. And, you know, uh, he has a couple of different book series that he's um, working on. He's doing another tribe. He's going to be actually at the event, giving out books. Oh, cool. One of our oh, judges. Yeah. And he's going to give them absolutely free because they're workbooks and there's things for you to be able to work through and it's something that people can do on their own time, but he also creates platforms for people to meet online and do different uh, 
speeches and um, different types of um, webinars that help people work through different ways to manage their stressors and their triggers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Like the workbook, that's a, a really, I mean, cause like you say, every, I, everyone knows someone that is suffering or has some sort of either mental disorder or PTSD and yeah, you know, trying to deal with them and figure out how to help them or what to do to help them or comfort them or, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing. So any, any like little things to help a situation out, it's really cool. And I greatly appreciate that you guys are uh, picking that. Now your other charity, uh, hold on here. Do, I'm doing the job of like nine guys right now. Yeah, you are. You are so we are, awesome. we are not broken. I'm trying to do the best I can, you know, you I, are. you're uh, doing it. Yeah, but uh, we are not broken. Tell us, tell us a little bit about this. And as we were kind of talking a little bit earlier too, um, yeah. uh, so we met Nick last year when I was at this event. Super <laughs> awesome story, uh, just Nick. really Nick. cool stuff. Uh, tell us a little bit about her and what this is all about. Well, Nick Austin is based out of uh, Georgetown, and she's a woman who photographs other women and girls who suffer from different types of traumas. And um, she tells their story when it comes to photographing her, um, her ladies and girls who suffer from different types of trauma. Now, what kind of trauma are we talking about? Like, because I know she herself has gone through, um, she had breast cancer. Correct. Right. Yes. Um, so, so almost all of them are what she focuses on is visible scarring and invisible scarring. So it literally ranges from all sorts of traumas, either physical, mental or emotional traumas. Um, and what she does is she allows women to have a platform to voice their stories. And the one thing that I love is that she really is creating a movement to change what society views as beautiful. And mm -hmm. she's breaking the stigma of what beauty is to not just society, but to these women that she influences because everyone truly does have a story that's worth being told. And those women that think that they don't, I hope are inspired by others who do tell their stories to voice their own stories and actually live and grow through it in the ways that they can. And not everybody's ready. And we're so grateful because she's actually going to be doing um, interviews with three nominated women at the event. And it's going to be so awesome for her to be able to do that. Um, one woman is coming down from Oklahoma. I have another woman who just moved here from Pennsylvania and I think that one of our ladies, I won't say the name, I don't want to like put it all the way out there because I think that that's their business to tell. Mm -hmm. But I'll just say that she's a very familiar face in the bearding community. That's super awesome. Yeah. Like I was very, when I did chat with her last year, because I, th the reason I started talking to her is uh, I was there taking pictures and she was also doing photography too, because that's what yeah. she does. And yeah. I was checking her camera. We were sitting there talking about her camera. And then like one thing just kind of led to a, each other. And um, we just started talking about stuff. And she was telling me about uh, all the things that she did. And I thought it was really, really cool. How did you meet her? So I was actually taking one of my last classes in college. And it was over business ethics. And one of our projects was to find a local organization that was a nonprofit to do some research on and everyone was doing all the basics. Everyone was like the first one that pops up. And I was like, I'm going to do something different. Like I want to see something that really speaks to me, what I've been through. I am a rape survivor. I'm a domestic abuse survivor. And, um, I've dealt with a lot of things. So to see other women be able to voice their concerns, I found her immediately. And I was like, well, well, this one stopped through. And, and I gave her, I looked through her messages. I looked through all of what she stands for. And I just fell in love with her, 
her, her vision. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll say. I fell in love with her vision and I called her up and I said, Hey, I'd like to do an event for you. And she was like, how did you get this number? And I was like, <laughs> website. she's like, what website? Can you send me a picture of it? I really don't want people to have my personal number. I was like, well, I'm really glad I got you. You're like stalking her MySpace page. <laughs> So, and, you know, so, now, now it's so far from that point, you know, it's going on almost three years knowing these people and getting to see them grow. And uh, she told me after she got nominated and won uh nonprofit of the year for Austin, Texas, as a woman, as a woman's organization. Oh, wow. She said, she said, yes, it was great, but honestly, I didn't believe you. I've had so many people come up to me and say that they want to do all these great things for me to help me get my nonprofit off. And then they would just disappear. So when I actually came with, when we actually came through, I'd hate to say just me because there were so many people involved. There's so many people that are behind that works. There's so many moving parts to all this, why it's so important that everybody communicates with each other. And for her to look at me and say, you came through for me. And look at what we're doing for so many women. It was just like, that's why we do it. And that's why the beard community is there. That's why masses get together and do what I call philanthropy on a budget. Like, you it's this beard comps prove that you can get a lot of people together that just spend a little bit of money. And it comes out to be so big, so big, just by people showing up. And it's just absolutely spectacular. Yeah. Justin, you had a question, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to say, like, you've kind of been there along her journey. I mean, you kind of met her kind of this was all before the publication and kind of all that. So you've been there. And to me, that that's kind of the most I, I guess what sticks out to me the most is that you you've just kind of been there and, be, and bridging that gap because you talk about bringing in the beard community. You talk about, you know, somebody that doesn't believe they're beautiful. And, you know, it, it's like she's saying, I didn't believe you. It's I, I just hear all these words. And it's so amazing to see now this is three years of of your event and to be along a journey and winning these awards uh, it's just a, it's an amazing cause. And when you talk about a beard community getting behind an amazing cause, you're absolutely right. And, <clears> and <throat> I love how it correlates like with, with the whole Whiskerina movement, because that's like an empowering yeah. thing with the women being involved in a men's kind of thing. You know, it's, you know, having a beard and mustache has been a man's thing. And, you know, granted there have been some women who have disorders that cause them to grow actual facial hair and stuff like that. But for these women who want to be part of the community that go out of their way to make these elaborate beards and everything, it's, it's showing a support of the community and wanting to be involved and stuff like that. So, I mean, kudos to that. So wrapping that all back into the whole beard competition aspect of this event uh, let's talk a little bit about the categories we have here. We have the list right here. Um, we have a kids category, teens cat- category, Whiskerina, freestyle, sea hops, Whiskerina creative, goatee, uh, styled stash, wahollers, best groomed, under four, under eight, under 12, and over 12. It's a lot of categories, girls, but you've that done it before. So how did, all right. So you kind of talked about the Central Texas Club, and that's how you got involved in kind of hosting the beard event at this event. Now this year you guys are kind of taking it over. You're taking the reins. So how's your organization skills with this aspect of it? Has it been going good? Like, you know, (laughs) it has been so easy. It has been, I have felt like being able to go and attend different comps over these past three years um, being welcomed with open arms by people that are really just willing to like dump all of this information into you to help you be successful. It's been absolutely spectacular. This year has been so smooth because we've done it before and all of it that we've done in the past was really kind of more of the marketing. The only thing that we're kind of struggling with is is the beard the beard side of it and not in the struggle that is like super rough that we can't handle it was more like well should we do these judging forms this way or does somebody have a template that we can use that way that might be simpler that maybe judges are familiar with 
because nobody told us any of that. Yeah. Like they, it was, it was just, it was just not communicated on, you know, I was kind of expected to do one side when, yeah, it's great. So it's just perfect. And now we're doing it and everything's set. We have all of our trophies ready. We have all of our prizes ready. We have everything. Um, I just went to FedEx today and printed out all the sheets that everybody needs. Like we are ready to go. And we still have like 10, 10 days. And that's phenomenal. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I feel really good about what's going to be happening. So if you need any help with the judging stuff, of course, Aaron and Natalie are going to be there and they're, you you know, they are beyond organized when it comes to events and when it comes to judging and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, I actually reached out to Tisha. Uh, Her and Shannon are absolutely spectacular. (laughs) Yes, Shannon is actually going to be our live live auctioneer, and I've, apparently we talked before this, and Scott is willing to help Shannon out. Yeah, so the whole plan is <laughs> Shannon gets to do all the talking and do the the bidding and everything and yelling out the numbers, and then and, and each between each number, then I just get to go up on the mic and go. <laughs> and then he does a number. And then he goes forty dollars. And I go forty-five dollars. And then I go because that's what it's. Yeah, I know. He always loves the surprises that I throw out at him. <laughs> Somebody's gonna dangerously screenshot you one day doing that. Low, low, low thing, Scott. You be you need to be careful of that. Yeah, I just I told him that I promised it'd be on video of Shannon. Let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie has magical binders for judges. She Woo! is. Yay! Uh, Yay! So, Thanks. Yeah. So, I was well, throwing so much stuff at Natalie. So, I was just yeah. Give her I don't know. I don't. You, I don't know if you had talked to her before this, but they're already on the road, so it might not be something that they have with them currently. But yeah. we can definitely figure a way to accommodate you guys and help with whatever. So. Talking Beards is always there for your help and we'll be there. So whatever you guys need, we're, we're there to help as well. So, yes, we are. So, yeah, especially when it comes to our prizes too, because honest Amish and you guys really, really pulled through because of you guys, every single one of our competitors that get first, second and third, will have goodie bags. So, yeah. 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 Contain yeah. some of this great stuff. <laughs> That's the good stuff. So you guys have been involved in the beard community. I mean, just about three years or so now, how did you, I mean, is that how you guys got inspired and did? I've actually been involved for a lot longer. 236 years. You don't look a day over 230. (laughs) Yes. So um, I was, we got involved in when 254 Whiskerman were still together. Okay, I remember them. Beers in the Hood. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of my first awards was from that. And I just, at that time, I was making beards for friends because I thought there was a particular view because just as much as men put like these ideologies on women, women do the same thing for men. So when I was doing and putting together beards, like I thought, well, they're not going to look at me and be like, oh yeah, she's a winner. So I would get my pretty friends, my pretty (laughs) friends to get the beards on and, and they would win for me and they would wear my, my masterpieces and they'd bring home the bowls for me. That was one of them. Nice. That's nice. I keep it. It's so cool. It It was a peacock beard. And she had like this tiara like this. Oh, I would love to see that. Like that. And the peacock feathers were right here. And I made sure to dot all of the peacock eyes is what they called. Did uh, she make peacock the peacock call? Because there's a there's a peacock call. Did she make the peacock call? That's the question. No. no. Oh. These guys right here. Oh, the eyes. You're yes. supposed to cover them. Yeah. If you use them, you're supposed to cover them. It's bad luck. Ooh. Now we we have uh, this just in breaking news. We do have a picture of one of Lupe's creations. Oh, yes! Stash. That was so fun. Those the are our stash. boys. I lo- and now as I'm sitting here looking at that, the cat on the shoulder is the best part of this picture. <laughs> <laughs> he looks She's very crazy bothered. Now. 
she stepped on some of our ribbons oh and there's muddy God. paws on yes. them. Oh, oh no. White because, you know. Yeah. White. Oh, no. Too close. It, well, add, anyway. it adds love to it, so which is yeah. Cool. Natalie said, "Don't worry about it." I was like, "What do I do? How do I clean them?" And they were like, "Google it." And I was like, "Okay, you're right." <laughs> Just put kitty paws on all of them. That way, it doesn't stand out. Now you got kitty paws on all of your awards. There you go. There you go, and it could be. I mean, because is not the the theme of this event, uh, Alice in Wonderland, correct? Yes, it is. Alice in Wonderland. It is Alice in Wonderland. So, now. We explain didn't. that whole thing so i really liked the component of the mad hatter that we're all mad here and that we all get lost sometimes in these worlds to kind of get ourselves away from like reality of all sorts and i just really thought it was super fun and a, we also partner not partner with but we're ad, we're advisory members for Central Texas Pride Community Center. Mm -hmm. And they actually had a queer youth prom for um, the community out here. And they did Alice in Wonderland theme. And it was just super cool to like see everybody come in and see like the background decorations. Oh, yeah. it and fun. it was just a really good time. And I was like, if that's okay, I'd like to use this theme. And he was like, absolutely, go ahead. So we just went with it. Although I will tell you, that we did not spend very much money on decorations. <laughs> we, Thanks. yeah, we decided that instead of buying decor for the event, we would just make our trophies kind of fall into that line because we would much rather spend that money. Yes. Yes. We would much rather yes. spend that money to give it back to the organization than us actually um, make it pretty. Like everybody knows. She's that is that is a beautiful trophy. So are you looking for people to be like in full garb, like dressed up? Are you looking for that as far as contestants and things? Is that why are you, you planning on coming and doing that, Justin? Are you skipping your softball game? <laughs> that that's that, that's what's intriguing me right now. <laughs> so I did toss around the idea of throwing in a mad hat, like the best mad hatter category. But past versions of myself, this is my our first year kind of going at it alone. And I didn't want to throw it off when I know it worked last year. Now, in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think I'm just going to play it safe. Third year's a charm. Gotcha. And let's let this... Let's let this be the extravagant shit show that it's that it can be. <laughs> so speaking of extravagant, we have a tremendous lineup of judges and MCs for this event. Let's let's get into that. So yes. I'll bring I'm gonna bring up the image so everyone's gonna see everyone all at the same time. So but our as, team. Yeah, you bring this up and you can uh tell it tell us a little bit about each person here. So starting with our MCs, of course. Yes, absolutely. I love them. They are absolutely just heartwarming. They both have such amazing stories as just individuals. Both of them are national title holders. Woo -woo. And we have Summer Hibbler or Jiggy. And then we have Charles, Charlie. Mother F and Goble. Yeah, he's a he's a big, big, big time beard winner with that tremendous beard. He's tremendous so beard. tremendous. He is absolutely spectacular. I love them both for just being so willing to just be a part of this event and believe in it. Mm -hmm. All we really want is to be believed in. Now, my judges, we have Olivia Chi Martin, which is actually Andrew Martin's wife. He's associated with the Central Texas Beard and Mustache Club. Mm -hmm. And then we have, unfortunately, Riley was actually the original judge that was going to be a part of this segment. He had to tap out and he tagged in one, the most beautiful woman, um, Mary Lou Newark. She is absolutely <laughs> spectacular. I love all that she brings to all of the competitions. I had the privilege of being, she was Krampus. And uh, uh, for Harry Holidays, it was absolutely spectacular. She's insane. Have, yeah, she's 
she's I love I love going into competition with her because she brings it. Yes. Um we have Jason Guzman, who is a part of the El Paso chapter of West Texas Villains. Uh, he's associated with Popo Beard, uh, Beard Oil. Then we have one of my favorite people in the world. Harry. 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 And Joker. He's actually bringing two of his fishing rods to be uh, live auction items. I'm super excited. He's doing two of them for us. That's and cool. then my personal friend, uh, along with his wife, it's uh, Lamar Molina. He's actually from this area. I've known him for many years. He was one of the people that also got us involved in the in the bearding community. He's a part of Austin Facial Hair Club. That's awesome. There we go. This is very cool. So yeah, that those are some really great judges, and this is going to be uh, this is really exciting. Now we were kind of showing the uh, trophy trophies a little bit earlier, and. You had talked about you have something special you maybe want to show us. Oh, my God. You have to now, bring up the pictures first. But yes. hold on. No, I'm going to show this because last year I attended this event, and this oh. is the monstrosity that I came home with for, for yes, Dustin's yes, show. Terrible. Now, this is probably – I mean – Goodness gracious! Yeah, see, I got around. <laughs> got that. Here's in the whole entire trophy. So this was this is what I came home with for best in show last year. So I'm going to show you a picture of what you guys were working on, and then you're going to show. Do you have the final product right there? Of course. All right. So here's the picture. Oh, it's a sneak peek. Now it is what is it? A caterpillar? Yes, it's Absalom from Alice in Wonderland. Ah, very cool. Okay, now are you guys ready to show it? Big reveal. Boom. There we go. That way. <laughs> so awesome. Wow. You guys definitely put a lot of work into that thing. Yay. Justin, maybe you should come and try to win I, that. I That is worth it. Completely 100% worth it. That thing is amazing. It says, wow. who are you? I'm best Scott. Who are you? Show. Are you going to be best in show again, Scott? Uh, prop, I don't think so. I don't know if I could lightning can strike twice for me. So <laughs> this is a, this is an actual hookah. You can absolutely clean it out. If that's what you'd like to I do. Would I would have gold paint on it though. Yes, it does. You'd probably. And don't glued, do that. It's glued together. You'd be high in different ways. I don't, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Andrew Madison says, <laughs> it's me. It's me. Hi, I'm the winner. It's me. <laughs> you, yes, you are yes. the winner. So it's so awesome because, you know, we thought, we think about all these things and how you are supposed to really create an event that people want to come to. So you have to build on all of these different ways to not only get the local communities involved, because at the end of the day, you're literally being able to, with my event, we're able to merge two completely different societies together and communities together. And they'll be able to see what the beer, what bearding is really all about. And I think it's so spectacular. And like I said before, it's just totally pushed under the rug. How amazing the beard community is. I see people all the time that come together for these amazing causes and they don't even like each other. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even like each other, but they're there for the real goal. And at the end of it, at the core of it all, we're all good people because that's what we do. We put all that thing, all those things aside and we get together for the bigger goal. And at the end of the day, anybody that can do that is gets a fucking gold star in my book. No, you did it. You did it. You did, did it. But no, I absolutely agree. I love when events like tag on with another event, like with yeah. uh, um, the event you, you guys did just yeah, we did the cornhole. I mean, we're already looking at a, a car show for ours. I mean, I, the, it, it's, it's such a, the, it's it. a perfect marriage. How many car guys you see or truck guys with a big ass beard? You're like, okay, you, you got to come over to our event. I mean, that's perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's it's nice when you can like like I said, marriage an event to it because it just it's bringing in two separate crowds and it's like showing these people this and showing these people that and it's like it, it helps grow the community, but it also helps the charities too because you're getting more people involved. And if this event continues to grow each year, it's it just compounds upon itself and you know it just makes more and more for everyone. 
Now let's talk a little bit about this part because this is a whole another part of the event too is uh, how much is this beard worth? Now tell us the little story about this. Okay, so I sat down with this gentleman. He is actually a local business owner who extends himself to other small business owners and does markets in our community. Uh, he owns a business called The Norns with his beautiful wife, Brittany. And he said, hey, I'll shave my beard off on stage for you if you exceed your goal. And then I had to look at him like, well, my goal is 15000 Like, I would love to raise 15000 for this event. But if I was going to shave your beard off, hmm. And I looked at him and I said, well, so mustaches went for 25000 So why don't we put your beard at twenty? I feel like that's a good number. And he said, all right, then. So I'm hoping that we make it to 20. I don't know if he's hoping that we make it to 20, <laughs> but uh, he is going to shave his beard off. So I will come in clutch with shears and clippers in hand. Mm -hmm. And if we make 20,000 by the end of the night, which we will, the cool thing about this is we will be able to give all of the numbers, everything we will have on hand to be able to give the total number before we leave at that event. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm excited. He's excited. He wanted to do something, give, give back. He said, how can I help? And he said, what about my beard? And, uh, and that's where we came up with. So yeah. I'm really excited for that. The fact that he, like we get random people to just extend themselves all for the name of charity is spectacular. It's so cool. Yeah. It's Stephanie big says shout out to David and Brittany at the Norns. As Stephanie says, come see us next year. So yeah. So this is a good marriage also yeah. where you guys would be doing almost a very similar event within a month and a half to two months from each other. If, if Conroe, right. We missed it. Yeah. yeah we yep. wanted to go, but this, this event is oh, so we... bad. our friend. So we have, we have several, we have over 35 vendors and um, Savage Glam was that bit beard, big beard for big, big love. love. Yeah, it's, yes. a, it's, a, it's a tongue twister. Yeah, Savage Glam was a pretty awesome, pretty awesome vendor to have. So this Season list that I have up on the screen right now, are these all your sponsors or are some of these sponsors and vendors? Those are all vendors and wow. some of them are sponsors. Wow. Yes. We That's are it. almost sold out. We're trying next year. I think we can add four more slots if we move things around, but right now we're past capacity. Wow. That's, I mean, and I mean, this is uh, for people who haven't been to this event it's an outdoor event. So hopefully we get, I mean, it's every event that I've been there has been like, it always seems like it's a cold day before. And then like the day of that event, it's always beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. It's like, it's like the gods are raining oh and sunshine upon you. We do have backup plans. So in the case that we needed to, we do have backups. Well, and yeah, the indoor facilities at the pit yeah. stop is, I mean, it's very uh, uh, sustainable for a large group of people. And, yeah. you know, even if you can't get all the vendors in there, at least it's a place for the people to go and, you know, get out of the inclement weather. But, mm -hmm. and you guys are going to have a few food trucks too. Who's that? Do you know? We're going to have six food trucks. Wow. We're going to have Rossler. Oh, well, maybe six. We have Rossler's Blue Court Barbecue. Absolutely spectacular. He's statewide now. Like people know him all over the state. We have Ray Ray's Kitchen. She has the most amazing chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. We have Thai Law, which is Thai cuisine. Um, it's fresh and always prepared on when it's ordered. Then we have the Coffee Saloon. Then we have maybe Reese's, uh, Reese's L Bang and Lemonade, and then we have Delectable Ooh. Delights, which is mini donuts. Oh, that's that's yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner, eleven to six. Show up, hang out, drink, oh, sober, up, drink yeah, sober up, drink right? sober up, drink sober up. Yeah, get your coffee. <laughs> yep. They have tea too. Yeah, that tea. Oh man. And they're all most of these businesses that we work with are veteran owned. That's cool. Yeah. And I do know the two that, uh, not that I any do anymore, but the drinks are very, very affordable at the pit stop, which is really cool. Yeah. That's the one thing I really liked about that uh, venue was 
I mean, especially you're just kind of hanging out all day and you're just having a couple of beers. It's, it's not going to break the bank. Awesome. The other thing that you're going to be wanting to spend money on is raffles, of course. So you guys obviously have the whole raffle game all figured out and you guys are going to be doing a live auction. So we got a couple pictures of some things here that uh, are going up for live auction. As you said, uh, Shannon chicken bread is going to be <laughs> going to be doing that for this thing. And then this is going to come up and he's going to be like, and uh, $20 going. <laughs> so yeah, um, so you guys got some really cool uh, live auction items, but uh, tell us a little bit about like about how many raffle items do you have and what's the whole, like, how do you operate your, your raffle stuff? I want to say that we're going to ra our raffle table is going to be just like almost everyone else's raffle tables. We're going to have, um, at you matter. They had an amazing little booklet that you could get one number. This is the one new number. trend that's like going on in the beard community, there. right? Yep. I thought that, I thought that came from you guys. Harry holidays. Too. Harry, Harry holidays yep. too. Yeah. So we got, some of those we have opportunities for you to get free tickets when you scan qr codes around the venue um we have i want to say that we have right now just on hand about 20 mm -hmm. raffle items yeah. and we have a couple of uh vendors that will be bringing yeah. some items as well and lots of those vendors actually stepped up their games they said as you would put and they actually are giving much bigger raffle items Averaging over a hundred dollars. Oh, I thought you were talking about size. Sponsors. I'm sorry. I thought you're talking no, no, no. about size. Cost right? wise. Cost wise. I'm cost sorry. wise. Cost wise. Cost wise. Um, we're gonna have really cool door prizes too. Um, we are not turning away raffle items. So if anybody comes to the event that just wants to give a raffle item to put behind the table for us, we will absolutely accept it and slap a number and a cup in front of it. All right, so, so I'm going to bring Justin and he's going to be raffled off. So you're going to have to sit there with, you're going to have to hold a little cup oh, and then people are going to see. I feel like we could live auction him. I don't I mean, know if your wife or, or girlfriend, I'm not sure what you have, but I don't think that they would be really happy with us. Ah, let's it's go for, for it. As long as you're not shaving my beard. Charity. It's for charity. It's for charity. I still think it would be fun to do one of those, like what they used to do, like the fireman auctions, like to raise money, like where they do like to you basically it's, they uh, bring up like firemen and women like bid on them to win a date. And then they go out on a date with them. I think that would be kind of cool. Like in the bearding community too, where you yeah. have a bearded guy go up for an auction and then they get to have a date with someone to be a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter. But I think that would be a cool way to raise a couple extra bucks. That I've seen it at a, a beer fest and it works perfect. Really? Well, because <laughs> yep. they're drunk there, right? There and they're brewers. So, of course, they're strutting around like your firemen. Yeah, that, that's a great. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, you can be a guinea pig. Send me your coming? April 1st. April 1st. I'm canceling my plans. Let's work on this. Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. I, they're going to hate us. You're going to lose the softball tournament. It's going to be our fault. You were the winning, you were the winning component. I was the winning. <laughs> Just don't shave my beard and we're good. I'm coming. I'm or, coming. or they're going to end up, he's not going to show up and they're going to win. And then they You're did it. it. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, thank goodness. Justin wasn't here. We are going to win now. <laughs> I thought I was frozen there for a second. It looked like it. I was like. Oh All my God. Right, let's, it really okay. So. You and like I said, you guys are doing a live auction, so we know, as you said, uh, there's going to be some fishing rods, and as this other stuff, we with this nice chair, rocking chair, uh, some yes. of these camping items and stuff. Well, yes. Do you know what else uh, you um, guys are live auctioning off? We also have oh, Justin, a, sorry, a Texas quilt that was gifted to us by our uh, I'm an amazing woman. That's just a, that's what she does for a living. She quilts. Um, then I think that's, I don't think, I think that's it. Yes. And then we'll have a game. A game. Or a game. You guys are going to. So the she game is might. called last man standing. And throughout the event, you can buy beads 
Mardi Gras red beads for $5 oh. a bead. You can get as many beads as you want, $5 each. And what you'll do is you get to win a two night stay at Main Street Inn in Gatesville, Texas. And it's flexible check in and flexible check out. But it's only good for July, though. It's only good for July. There's a couple weekends that I think I can work with um, them, but we can give you a couple weekends in July that you have an option to choose from. So what does last man standing, how does this exactly work? It's super easy. So last man standing, everyone will be standing with their beads and you get the option to either choose your hands and you put them on your head for heads, put your hands on your hips for tails and you flip a quarter and the last person standing at the end of the game wins. And there's even a consolation prize. Constellation. Consolation prize. Ah, ah, ah. For the tea this time. I focused on my enunciation. You, and that is a, you did it right there. You did it. You did it. Um, so for the, there is a runner up option. You'll be getting either the two nights at the main street Inn with a beautiful pool. You have access to the pool house, access to the kitchen, access to the, the patio and the cute little fixings of what Gatesville, Texas is Gatesville, Texas. You create a great little place called Stude Bakers there that has all of the pints of beer that you could imagine. It has ice cold frozen mugs and great food. And it's just, um, and for those that win the runner up, they will get two tickets to go see Carvin Jones and Colleen when he comes to perform. Great guitarist. You got to check them out. All right. That's awesome. Okay. So that's pretty much everything. I mean, you, you said you had something with the hotels. Yes. Yes. Oh, what? <laughs> I think she's cueing me. We got some. I'm cued. <laughs> All right, it's Lupe's, Lupe's turn to, to tell us something here. All right, well, the Shiloh Inn in Colleen is um, offering discounted prices for their rooms. And their room's going to be a, a queen size, one bed, or a double queen size. And each of those would be $117.99 around there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's an option right there for those that are traveling from out of town. Um, that kind of helps you save a little bit of money if you, you kind of room with somebody there. Um, yeah. but you know, that's just somebody that we reached out to who was willing to work with us on that. Uh, there's other places in the area, of course. I mean, your choice, but there's just, there's just one that we just reached out to. Yeah. I mean, it looks like, uh, in the pictures here, the, they have a really nice pool and hot tub and the rooms look really nice. So yes. yeah, it's one of the it, better places in Colleen. Um, make sure that if you do reach out to Shiloh ends that you mention the extravagant shit show. They will know because that's what your yeah. special discount is. Um, we also did some research. There are other places to stay in the interims of $45 all the way up to $175. Oh, wow. That's so luxury. This depends on what you're wanting to do and where you're willing to stay at. Um, I know that a lot of people have friends in this area that they're able to funk with, which I'm super, super grateful that. So many people in the beer communities open their homes up. We have a very small house. You would not I'm fit. Sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Newsflash. Andrew's winning best in show. And he's got to take that chair. Off, carry oh, on. I told you. You got to <laughs> yeah. show them. I was like, what if somebody's like flying over there how, and they win that or they, you know, they get that. How are we going to, are we going to be able to pay for their shipping? Cause I don't know. No, that's up to that. Should be up to them. But yeah, I mean, like if a person like Andrew ends up winning it, he can, he can just bring it back to my place. I'll just bring it here and then we can like gingerly take it apart and I can mail him one piece. Piece by piece. piece, by piece. <laughs> and then he could just reassemble it. Or he says Speaking it should up. be like the Thunderdome style. Two people enter oh, one person. Remember, person I remember something because yes. you said piece by piece and that's a song and a song means karaoke night on March oh. 31st. Yes, that is correct. Friday, I knew the day before the car and bike show and beard and mustache competition and that's Woo! why we aka having a shit show yes pre party so, from um, 6 p.m to 10 yes so we are this is our first time doing the karaoke for a cause and um 
like Nikki says, we're a very musically inclined family. I'm not bragging, but I'm just saying we, we sound kind of bad. We're not competing because we don't need to bring those trophies back. Oh. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we're hosting, so we we may or may not sing a tune here or there. But um, anyways, uh, that night it's gonna be ten dollars for um competing, right? Yes. The competitor cost is ten dollars. Registration starts at six. And we have a few judges that will be there. Some of our really good friends. Um, and we are also going to be selling votes, right? For two dollars. So basically, we have judges who will judge. You know the event, but if if you're willing to chime in and you know add to their vote, you pay your two dollars, get you a vote, and you can do that as many times as you want to, and that just kind of helps bring more money in for the event. Wow, that's a really that's <laughs> you're getting my gears turning on that. You're got karaoke, yeah. cars, trucks, beards. This is yeah, this is y'all are gonna have a great, great. It's definitely great a event. party. And y'all are ready. You're you got ten days. Y'all are like ready to go. We're excited. We it's are. like almost you could do like a, a, a I, mean, I know we're, we're out of time here, but uh, I, I could almost picture like at a comp, a beard competition where you have all the guys line up on the front of the stage for each category and you put like a, a jug in front of each one and people can come up and stick dollar bills in and give their vote that way. Yes, mm. it's true. So it's That's an extra people's choice. It's yeah. almost like American Idol. So yeah. oh, that would be a good way to do best in show. That is a good way. Ooh. They've actually mentioned that to us in the cars, like being able to pick it that way and let the people pick. But we just couldn't figure out how to like work it all. So we're going to try a couple different things and see what happens. And then we'll get back to you guys and, and see what works and what doesn't work. And then maybe help put some tidbits into you guys so all of your events can be successful. Because at the end of the day, we're all working to a common goal, making sure that everybody's getting taken care of. That's why we go to so many beard competitions and why we keep reaching out. All Absolutely. right. Well, I want to thank you ladies for coming on tonight. It's always a pleasure to see. I always love seeing you both, uh, even together individually. Cause I feel like the last few events I've seen you individually and not so much together, but, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you guys in a couple weeks and yes. spending the afternoon with you. And That's once good. again, like we said, if there's anything I can do, please reach out. Um, I'm more than willing to help out with anything with the event. Uh, Justin also said the same thing too. Like he's going to bring his uh, yeah. Frisbees and he's going to throw them at the dogs in the crowd. Yeah. So, I mean, luck, hopefully Aaron won't bring Frisbees uh, from Busey's this time and kill any dogs like last year. So, <laughs> And raffle me off. Let's do it. And we're going to raffle Justin off for a date. And, uh, yes. So. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much gosh, for is, having us. We appreciate you guys reaching out and us being all a part of this together. Yes, we well, we we love you ladies very much and we appreciate all you guys have done for the community as well. And it's been wonderful getting to know you guys. And uh we want to thank you very much. And uh we shall see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. They're so oh, awesome. So They're lovely. Just, like, energy. I think it was just at first, it was kind of like, oh, and then as soon as they got, oh, there's the passion, and then, then it blew yeah. up. Yeah, well, well, it's it's the whole thing of like once you start talking about what you're passionate about, then it just just starts coming out, and that's why I love having guests like them on because you can just see how excited they are about their event and how much time and effort they've put into it, and there's there's just so much going on with it, and you know we probably could have talked to him for like another 20, 30 minutes about the event, which is really cool. Cause I love learning not only about how the event is getting organized and how it all started, but I really like kind of like brainstorm. It's like those, those last second brainstorming ideas of, yeah, it would be cool. Hey, how about if at a competition where like, we're trying to pick a uh, best in show. Well, how could we do it without like, you know, like, Hey, let's get the crowd involved. Let's put like uh, a pitcher, empty pitcher in front of each contestant on the front of stage. People can bring dollar bills up and stick them in there. And you know, it's an extra way to make some extra money and it makes it a people's choice. And you know, it's, it, I mean, once again, it's like we, we, we sit, we sit down and we, come up with all these like interesting ideas of how we could do cool stuff at these competitions and stuff. And, uh, 
Um, we want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, see, Andrew says Nikki and Lupe were more in to entertain than Scoot and Justin. I said what I said. He's just mad at me about our text messaging earlier today where I was calling him a, a copycat. But, uh, and Jeff says, what an amazing show. I'm sure we'll see Jeff uh, at this event too. He, he seems to show up at all of them. Like, this is, it, it's so great to see like the reoccurring people that come to all these events. And, and hopefully we see a lot of new people. Hopefully a lot of people are checking out the, uh, the beardcalendar.com and uh, finding out about stuff like this. Like I said, go to the beardcalendar.com. There's going to be a list of all the events going on in the United States for the year and some events uh, going on overseas and stuff. But if you have an event and you want to get it featured on the beard calendar, um, there's a little pop-up menu, just fill it out. And that's about it. And also don't forget to go to uh, honestamish.com. If you want to get some uh, great beard products and some soaps and other stuff, uh, use promo code talking beards to save 15% off your order. And I want to thank Justin, uh, very much for, uh, stepping up and filling in for Aaron tonight. Uh, it was very nice having you. You are very, I'm very thankful for you. You're such a great guy and I appreciate all you do. I mean, being new in the whole beard scene is like, you've really just put your foot to the gas pedal and have been killing it. So thank you very much for showing up tonight. So Appreciate you. It was fun being here. I'm glad we got Nikki and Lupe on and uh, yes. hope to maybe be on sometime soon. Y'all take care. Yeah. So uh, everyone go to talkingbeards.com. Uh, you can check out more about uh, the, uh, the, the show. You can uh, check out some older episodes and so go subscribe to the podcast. So thank you everyone. Uh, next week, Aaron will be back and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at talkingbeards.com.